How are we going, folks? I'm in my little courtyard with my little group of trees, my little orchard here, but we're also going to go out to the main orchard to check the smaller trees, what's going on. But before we go there, we talk about leaf curl. Well, we're at the stage now where we actually cannot spray the trees. So if you've got a peach or nectarine tree, and I'm checking my one here, I've been spraying this once a month from autumn last year. And this is the only time I cannot spray because it's in full bloom. It's just pushing on its flowers. Even though the temperature is still bloody cold. Today we got up to about nine degrees. And this morning when I got out of bed at 4.35, it was minus one degrees outside. That's how cold it is. Now, I mean, we're in September. I know September tends to be a little bit cold, but I've got the feeling this year it's going to be colder than usual for a longer period. So monitor your trees because that will affect the quality of flower on your plant and the longevity of the flower on the plant too, so that it pollinates. And top of that is your bees. They won't be as active uh, when it's cold outside. They'll come out when it gets, it gets over 15 degrees and it's nice and warm and sort of balmy temperature, 15. For those up in Queensland, 15 degrees is a balmy temperature in Victoria. Not unlike 25 when it's up there for you guys. So when you get a 15 degree and over above, uh, bees will be much more active. Your flowers will be more prominent and hopefully last on the plant longer. But when it's like this, you can't spray it. Otherwise you'll affect the pollination, you'll affect the bees and all things like that. So this is doing well. The only time I'm gonna come back and start spraying this is once it sets fruit, and then I'm gonna start spraying it every couple of weeks if I need to. Monitor the leaves, because look, they're just starting to come out now. See? And these will show you, if there's leaf curl on a plant, these leaves won't get much larger before they start curling over already. Here's some larger ones here. See these there? They're pretty good. That's not bad. This one here as well, come down here. See that one down here? That's nice and clean. So these leaves are really nice and clean still. Happy with that. And I'm looking all the way around. There's more leaves down here. In the past, with the warm weather, these would be blistering already. You'd see a discoloration in the leaf. Is it happening here, maybe? Not that I'm looking for problems. Well, I am looking for problems. I don't want any problems. No, they're fine. They're nice and clean. So we'll come back in the next few days as they start to grow and the weather warms up, hopefully. And we'll see if there's any leaf curl. And if there is, we'll talk about it then. But now let's go and check out our nectarine and peach trees in the orchard. Bugger me, folks. This is a little peach tree here. Got to get my glasses on because I can see blackness on the tips. Look at this. I've sprayed this once already, but these little critters, mate, they're not, they're, they don't want to give up. Every single bud, oh, they just, they'll fall off. That's the good thing about it. You can take them off easily like that, right? Ideally, actually, if I had a little art brush, that would be a good way to do it, I reckon. Get a little fine art brush and just go around there, dab it into the oil and just wipe it on. It's going to be tedious, but because it's a small tree, it can be done on large trees. Folks, if you've got this problem on a large tree like this, oh, you're, it's, it's, it's going to ruin it if you don't do anything about it. Eco oil, yeah, but it's not the strongest of products as an insecticide to control it. You can put some extra chili in it if you like, and garlic in it, and di diatomaceous earth in it as well. This is what I've got here, eco oil and diatomaceous earth. Bud swell, these are about to burst open. Now the problem I have is if I do nothing, absolutely nothing, the flowers are going to be gone. They're not going to do anything. It'll actually dry the tips off on this branch, um, and, and you know it'll it'll be non-productive, completely non-productive, and it can probably kill the tree as well. So I am going to spray this. I'm going to take a risk with it. And if I lose the flowers because of the spray, I'd rather lose the flowers than lose the tree because of the aphids. So doggies, get out of the way. That's it. <laughs> Just which way is the wind blowing? There we are. This is my eco oil, my easy hand sprayer. And just make sure it doesn't spray the camera. Yep, it's blowing downwind. It's quite safe, so if it goes on your animals, not that you should be spraying your animals, folks. It's not going to harm them. Basically, olive oil or veggie oil with a little bit of soap and water is what you can make at home as well. The diatomaceous earth, well, you're going to have to get that on our website. That's available on our website. This should suffocate them, but I'm actually going to spray it and then go around and rub the worst ones off with my fingers too. Just rub my fingers over them. Look at this one, mate. It's literally just... Can I just say it? It's just destroyed the tree. Look at it. It's all over it. The aphids have gone all over it. And you, on the stems there, they just love... What variety is this one? 
white asiatic or something like that. He has destroyed, look at the leaf curl. Now this isn't leaf curl blistering because of leaf curl. This is the aphids in there. Look at that, they're all over it. They are gonna eat this tree alive. Folks, I haven't been out here for about three days. And I had sprayed this about five, six days ago and cleaned it up. They've come back with a vengeance on this plant here and they will destroy this tree on me. I've got to get back out of here now with my little art brush. Bugger the art brush. Just give it a quick drench. I haven't got much left in this bottle already, it's gone. And now I'm just gonna rub my fingers. You need to. There's no point in me. I'm not gonna get any fruit on this. If I get any fruit off this, it'll be a bloody miracle. But what I've got to make sure is that I don't lose, look, here. Look at this. That is on just one little branch. I just ran my finger on one little branch at the bottom. I'm gonna do it again. This finger's clean. Let me see what's on here. There, look at that. One little branch, it's about five inches in length, 150 mils, 160 mil. Look at this, it's, it is, it'll suck the living daylights out of your plant. But you gotta get out to your trees. This is the time of year. I have to come back here with a rag. No, I've just got grass, do that. Get outside and check your trees for attack of the pests. And this is one of the worst scenarios that you could that occurs in your garden. Aphids all over your peach and nectarine trees. I mean, they go everywhere, but if you've got a young tree and you've had it for a year or two and it hasn't been fruiting and you haven't been paying attention, it'll be because of these little, I'm gonna swear. I really wanna swear. You can beep it out. <laughs> See this, that's dead. That's been sucked out to dry completely by the aphids. Again, all these tips are gone. Yeah, you need to prune them now. All this is gone. It's dying back here as well. This is completely dead. Let's work around this tree. This is all dead here as well. There's another dead branch down here. And here. And here. Take that off. That's dead as well. <laughs> you know, the tree's, really struggling. I'm going to have to give this a real good um, feed now. We can see we've mowed the lawns, we've brush cut everywhere between the trees and now we're going to drop our fertiliser. I haven't done it early enough folks, I've been talking about doing it about two, two, three weeks ago and I've fallen behind schedule as well so you know we're no angels here, you know we're no experts. Well we like to think we're experts but we're never on time with everything. So better late than never and get out and monitor your trees every day whilst they're in flower. That's when they're most vulnerable to being attacked. And if the tree is stressed, it puts on a call signal and the aphids come after it. So this tree has been struggling for a while. So we're gonna feed this up now, clean up here. We haven't brush cut here, but we're gonna clean all this up a bit more, drop a bag of superfood and black red and compost on top. And hopefully we can salvage this tree and bring it and nurse it back to good health. Aphids are in force. They're out in action. What the hell? The, what have you done? Did you just cut that out of the garden? Hey? Was that you? Who did that? Come here. Sit. Sit. Down. Down. Oh yeah, you're the queen. No folks, this, this is the rootstock that took off on one of the trees I had to cut it out. And Vader loves gnarling on it. He loves, he's a typical boy. He's a male dog. Go boy. This one hasn't got any aphids on it at all. And neither have those three or four over there. All the first row over there. Let's quickly have a look. These are super clean. We've got a bit of dye back on top. Cut all that off. Is that branch completely dead? No, it's not half a dead. This is good. This one's good. Look at this one. This is great. This is completely clean. And remember to always spray your tools between one tree and the other with metho so you don't bring any disease, but I'm not carrying any aphids across here because I squashed every single one of them. This is nice and clean as well. How about this one? This hasn't burst out yet. This is our peach Alberta. And there's not a single bit of aphid on this one here. So far, two trees out of all the peaches and nectarines that we have are getting infected by aphids or attacked. This is super clean as well. Happy days, folks. All right, so look out for aphids on your peach and nectarine. Control the leaf curl as well. If you haven't got the flowers out yet, you can still spray with your bluestone. Otherwise, wait until the flowers set fruit and then continue your spraying regime as you need to. And then make sure you feed them. If you haven't fed them, like I haven't fed all my trees yet and I haven't even finished pruning here, but that's okay because I want growth on them. I don't want so many flowers. 
um, we'll be taking some of the, there's about 20 odd trees I've still got to cut back down, but that's all going to happen in good time. Check out our website, vasilisgarden.com, almost forgot how to say that, and happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Have a wonderful day, and we've got a twin pack sale for all the fathers. Buy one for yourself, buy one for dad as well, for a nice Father's Day gift. All at vasilisgarden.com, from me, Vasily, Maresi. Thank you.